This is one of the scariest experiences of my life. It happened many years ago, and I've kind of put it to the back of my mind. It's one of those things that you never really think will happen to you, but when it does, it just feels like you're in a bubble. I don't know how I feel about bringing this all back up again, bringing back all the emotions of that day, but to me, it was terrifying. So, this happened on Halloween. Me and my friends were going to a Halloween party and were walking back late one night. We'd had a little bit to drink, but nothing crazy, and we were just walking back home. There were three of us. As we were walking down the road, we were walking past trick-or-treaters. It wasn't a late night party, it was kind of a start in the afternoon, end around 7, 8 p.m. So trick-or-treaters were still out. Obviously, everyone's dressed up in costumes, so you don't really think anything of it. That's when my friend Tom turned to me and said, have you noticed that that guy has been following us for a long time? What guy? I thought to myself. So I turned around and there was someone dressed in all black with this weird monstrous kind of mask on. It was orange and had really weird hollow eyes but I didn't really think anything of it. I didn't really know what monster it was supposed to be, what character it was supposed to be. Maybe it was just one of those cheap ones from one of the pound shops but I had no idea. The guy was in all black, almost like a robe with this weird mask on. It kind of looked like, you know those pictures when people have zoomed in on an ant's face or a bug's face and it just looks weird and monsterish? It kind of looked like that. Anyway, I said that I hadn't really noticed him but he's probably out with his kids or something trick or treating so we just continued walking. We walked another couple of blocks and this guy was still behind us. We were getting a little bit freaked out at this point. So we decided, probably badly, that if we stop and let him pass, maybe he'll just continue on his way and he's just weirdly going the same route as us. For whatever reason, I was trying to justify this guy. I was talking about times when I've driven my car and I've been behind someone and I keep turning the same way as them, even though I'm going that way and it just kind of looks suspicious. Maybe that's what he was doing. So we stopped, when this guy was getting closer, it became apparent how tall he was, he must have been 6 foot 5, and he had one hand behind his back at all times, which kind of creeped me out. I understand if you've got a child with you and you're just trick or treating at people's doors and you're pretending you have something on you, but this guy was doing it down the road, which was extremely suspicious to me. The man started to walk past us very slowly. As he did, he didn't even look at us. We just pretended we were talking and on our phones or whatever. When he got about five foot away and stopped, he stopped with a thud as well. He kind of stomped his boot on the ground. As we look over, obviously we were trying not to look too much. We saw it was in his hand. He had what looked like a massive piece of wood. We all kind of gave each other a look, because that was a bit weird. Why is he carrying a piece of wood around with him? It kind of looked like a floorboard piece of wood, like fairly thick, about four feet long maybe? It just seems strange. Then, all of a sudden, he turned around, shouted something that we couldn't understand, and started swinging for us. And when I say swinging, I mean recklessly swinging, just throwing his arms around and running towards us. We ran as fast as we could and turned down the nearest road. As we did, we ended up on a dead end road, a little kind of cul-de-sac. Typical. Of course we would. I suggested that we all split up and hide. So we did. We were as quiet as we possibly could be. One of us hid behind a huge tree, one of us hid behind a dumpster, and the other one, I had no idea where they went. I was the one behind the dumpster. There were small cracks in the dumpster and I could kind of see through, when it looked like the man was on his phone. That surprised me. He stood there, far enough away that I couldn't understand what he was saying, but I could see him moving, and he looked angry. That's when a car pulled up and stopped. 
I could see my friend gesturing that the car was there. And I could see that maybe he thought that this could be some kind of help for us. But I immediately stopped that. I put my hand up to my mouth. Hinted for him to be quiet. And we just listened. That's when three other men jumped out of the car. And started talking to the man. I have no idea who they think we are. They must have the wrong people because we're not who they're looking for. Why was he dressed like that anyway? Was he scouting for somebody? What was happening? At this point it was extremely dark, so my two friends had snuck their way over to me. They were far enough away that they wouldn't have heard at this point. I suggested that we hide just behind the wall. See there was a lip in the wall between two houses, and I thought if we went there, they might not even look there. All these men, all dressed in black and with the same kind of masks on, started searching the area. They looked in all the areas that we had just been hiding, but thankfully, they never saw us. The men eventually gave up and went, and we finally made our way out about 10-15 minutes later. We decided to run to my friend Tom's house. He only lived about two blocks away, so we did that. We thought about calling the police, but what would we say? A man followed us and a car pulled up, but nothing happened. He tried to attack us, but nothing happened. Maybe we should have called the police, who knows. I feel like if this situation ever happened again, or touch wood it doesn't, we decided to not phone the police and just stay in for the night. I haven't spoken to those guys in a long time, and I hope they're okay, but I'm sure that's an experience that all of us will never forget. One, this is the part of the video where there's no more stories, so if you're only here for the stories, then there's plenty more on my channel, and plenty of other channels out there that narrate stories much better than I do. I'm just here for a conversation. Um, I'd like to say that I have a lot planned for Halloween. But that's just not the case. I um I do this video as these these videos as and when I feel like doing them. I don't feel any pressure to upload. You know, this channel's been going a long time and I just upload what I want when I feel like uploading. And I think I'm just happy with the little community we have over here. I know there's not loads and loads of people on my channel, but I, I really enjoy it like the people that I have here and I appreciate all of you I um, I see this channel as an outlet rather than something that I need to do I just as you know I upload every couple of months and I'm quite happy with that now I um, I used to upload a lot more frequently but now for many years I haven't I just enjoy what I'm doing on this channel and I see this as a hobby something that I can do when I'm interested in doing it and I know that there'll be some people that are always there which I really appreciate I um, <clears throat> I like that these videos sometimes can get a message out there and can make people aware of what can happen if you're not aware of your surroundings and I really like that I think sometimes just doing things for your own mental health is good you know like for me sometimes these little talking bits at the end of the video I really look forward to them because it just helps me um, kind of just vent things if I'm if I have something on my mind or I'll go you know do some exercise and it makes you feel good and you know sometimes you should just do things that make you feel good I think um, and just having an outlet especially when you're really busy in your daily life I think it's really important to have an outlet I am um, I just I, I wish I had the motivation to upload every week on this channel I just don't have that and I, I, when I used to upload frequently I hated uploading frequently I didn't feel like I was always passionate about what I was uploading whereas now I feel like I'm more interested in the topics I'm talking about and also it doesn't feel like it no I'm not out and I think oh, I've got to upload a video I just think oh yeah I'll upload that when I feel like it and that's what I enjoy doing. I see channels that can upload every day and credit to them if they can do it, but I just couldn't. It's just not me. I don't have that passion. No, I enjoy it as a I was kind of like just a hobby on the side, not as a 
it was a full time every single day grinding it out. I just couldn't. It just doesn't interest me at all. I'm happy with you know the viewers that I have. I'm happy with where my channel's at. It doesn't affect me. I don't care about the views or anything like that on the channel. Subscriber count. It doesn't bother me at all. You know, I'm just happy with where it's at. I'm trying to do things like this. Just you know, as and when. Um, but I think it's important in general just to have I know I'm waffling now just have an outlet you know even if it's, it's like if there's a board game you enjoy playing or doing a puzzle or colouring or anything it's really good just to have that time to yourself in the evening or whenever every single day I just think it's important to have time just for yourself you know where you can just be on your own enjoying your own company I think is really important not to be dependent on others for being happy you know I am um, I think especially with these kinds of videos I do enjoy the fact that I can sp help spread awareness for certain things you know like being aware of your surroundings and that you should always be careful I think there's good messages I also love the charity things that we've done in the past and I'd love to do more of that in the future um, I just I, I don't really even know I don't watch other horror channels I don't know what any of the other horror channels are doing I know I mean I I know that all the people that I started with I don't know if they're still going I, I really honestly don't know I don't keep up to date with any of it I um, <clears throat> sorry I've had a cold my throat's been a bit weird but yeah I, I don't um, I, I just don't watch horror videos that much I, uh, I watch certain documentaries and stuff and that kind of thing, but I don't watch horror story channels or anything. I, um, I'm just kind of happy doing my own thing. And I have been for many, many years now. I, um, I think I, I kind of see this more as a way I'd like to try and help people as much as I can. So if there's any suggestions for ways we can do that on the channel still, please let me know. Um, also, um, the weather here has turned. <laughs> I mean, it it was on the turn for a while, but the weather really has gone now. It's uh, getting cold, which I think is good because I love, you know, Halloween when it's really icy cold outside. I really do like the Halloween atmosphere. Where in like whatever country you're from, what makes you feel like it's it's Halloween in a way because you know when the shops have like Halloween decorations which shop in your area has the best ones because we don't really have anything fantastic here Costco's used to have really good stuff I don't I haven't been there in a while so I'm, I don't know but they used to have some really cool Halloween decorations um, there's but then you get like that's standard like Tesco's and Asda's and those kind of things but there's nothing great but I'd like to know what you guys you know wherever you're from do you have any really cool Halloween themed you know like shops or anything be interested to know um, also as per usual I'm back on my fitness and trying to be healthy update um, it's going okay it's not been bad I'm finding more things that I actually enjoy eating as well like that don't that don't take too long so I've been trying just to be healthier and make things that are quick because for me, if it can be quick and healthy at the same time, then that's great. I just don't enjoy cooking that much. Like, I don't have to spend ages cooking. I don't mind making stuff, but I don't want to spend forever doing it. So that's what I've been doing, trying to have, like, healthier foods. The thing is, I like grapes. I buy grapes every couple of months. Eat, like, three, and then throw them away. It's so pointless. I really need to just stop buying them. I need to find a fruit that I really can eat every day. But there's not really many. Some gold kiwis are nice, but there's not many that I really love. Like I do I like the taste of smoothies, but they're packed full of sugar. Um, strawberries are nice, raspberries are nice, but I just if they're in the fridge. I just won't pick them. I just won't go for it, and then just go off. So you need to just give me some suggestions for nice fruits you can have on the daily. You know, like quick and easy. Not don't take ages to prepare or whatever. But yeah, let me know. And I'm proper waffling. I only wanted to give you an update and say that I'm not playing loads of videos, but still live, still going. 
and uh, yeah leave suggestions what you'd like to see and uh, yeah love you all uh, give some suggestions for charity ideas we can do in the future and yeah speak to you later love you all bye